For every gut-busting gag or adrenaline rush action sequence in Steven Universe, the series matches with intense, eerie, and just flat-out creepy moments that leave people running to Photoshop, making gifts as the said scene, and posting it on their blog with the caption, People say this is a kid's show? I'm Ostrich Vox, and the Halloween season is coming to a close. So today, let's count down five of the scariest moments in Steven Universe. Now, when I say scary, I'm not saying I was shaking in my blanket, shooting my eyes from the TV. By scary, I'm talking moments that give the audience and the characters a sense of danger, uneasiness, generally scenes that disturb us. That, hey, if that was me in Steven's shoes, I'd probably pee my pants. The show's target demographic is also kept in consideration for this list. So for our older viewers, even if these scenes don't necessarily shake you up, put yourselves in the shoes of a 6 to 11 year old watching these episodes for the first time. When you're that age, your tolerance for horror is still very much developing. All that cleared up, let's dive into it. Number 5. The Zoom In's Breakdown Kicking off this list is actually something that can be interpreted differently to a lot of viewers, considering it's surrounded by a lot of comedic relief. In the episode, The Zoo, which is of course the penultimate episode of The Zoo arc, Steven reunites with Greg and Pink Diamond's Human Zoo. Greg introduces Steven to the Zoom In's, the latest generation in a long line of offspring from the original humans Pink Diamond relocated to her utopia of a prison. As they were born in the zoo, their concept of life greatly differs from Steven or Greg's. They've never experienced physical or emotional pain. Everything is handed to them. They're under this facade, they're free, when in reality, they aren't. A voice in their earrings tell them what to do and when to do them, including waking up to sleeping. While it's all festivities they very much enjoy, like eating, swimming, or being assigned a soulmate, it's still on rails. They haven't actually experienced what it's like to sleep in, eat what they want to eat, and of course, love who they choose to love. All these issues come to a head during the choosing ritual. Greg refuses to let gym technology decide who he ends up with, and explains that's not how it works on Earth. After an inspiring speech that they should be able to be chosen with whoever they want, all the Zoomans declare they want Greg. Unfortunately, Mr. Universe is a heartbreaker, stating that he wants to be with none of them, and their instant reaction is a mental breakdown. This is where the moment becomes disturbing, and pretty terrifying, when you isolate the comedic relief that coats it. These people never experienced any form of hurt before. This was their first exposure to the worst kind of pain, heartbreak. Imagine being in that situation, shutting down a group of people in one fell swoop and they just shatter. Their grief and difficulty to process what's happening causes them to cry so bad, Y6's nose is running. They begin to beg the disembodied voice to take their hurt away, and yeah, do you understand how creepy this is? Is it just me? Let's put this in a different context. Just imagine, you're new to school and you befriend a group of people and turns out, they all have a huge crush on you. Ooh, hot shot. But you're not exactly vibing with any of them, so you shoot them all down. And they just begin bawling and begging their god to take their pain away. Way. And then they begin chasing you. Like, what the heck were they going to do to Greg if they got him? What makes this so disturbing to me is that they look just like everyday humans. I mean, besides their nifty attire. Seriously, if Steven didn't jet Greg out of there, who knows what would have happened? I just think the creepy nature of this scene is severely underplayed with how over the top their crying is portrayed, followed by the Amethyst who barges through the room trying to calm them down. Although, it did lead into one of my favorite exchanges in the entire series thus far. I'll never choose it again. <laughs> sure, you will. Number 4. Jasper Destabilizes Garnet Now that I got my artsy, it's just like, my interpretation bro, pick out of the way, let's talk about without a doubt one of the most alarming moments in Steven Universe. A sequence so unsettling, it was edited out of other countries, and that's Jasper striking Garnet with a destabilizer in the episode, The Return. Considering throughout the entire season, the gems have managed to walk away from battles relatively safe, Pearl being the only one who's reformed at this point in time, the narrative really have to up the stakes or for the viewer to treat Homeworld as a serious threat. Yes, we had episodes upon episodes building up to the gravity of the situation, ever since Lab has referenced home in the episode Mirror Gem half a season earlier. If the gems were able to walk out of this scot-free, it would have been disappointing to say the least. That's where Jasper comes in. This is the third Homeworld gem we've been introduced into the series up to this point, but the first that clearly meant business from the very beginning. Lapis came off very friendly towards Steven. Peridot seemed very frantic and nervous, but with Jasper, we just knew this is the one 
someone who wasn't going to break so easily. So how do they showcase Homeworld far out classes of crystal gems in every way, shape, or form? With this horrific sequence that's become an iconic one. Within seconds, Jasper has reduced Garnet, the leader, the one who's been betrayed as the strongest crystal gem, to nothing but her gemstones. It wasn't even with her own bare hands, but with a gem destabilizer, a weapon we've never seen before, and taking into account that Lavis warned everyone that Homeworld has become technologically advanced, it makes the mind wonder, what else can they do? Usually Garnet puts up a good fight, but after already being pushed back by Jasper, she literally runs into her own demise, and begins to violently shake. We've never seen Garnet this vulnerable before. If the shaking wasn't jarring enough, Garnet snaps backwards as her visor splits into two, as if she's just suffered from extreme whiplash and her neck's been broken. To pile on top of that, she falls apart limb from limb like Legos. Pearl and Amber screaming in horror adds to the tragic atmosphere. As a first time viewer with no idea of what happens next, you really do believe this is the end of Garnet. The last thing both Steven and the audience sees is Garnet staring at him with an expression that conveys a sad yet shocked expression, as if she's barely processing what's going on, yet she knows it's not good. And then she just poofs, but it gives off the illusion she exploded. Also Jasper's just smirking, showing off she's taking immense pleasure at this sight. I'd also like to add, it's not as if there's dramatic music you'd typically expect in this sort of scene playing. Instead, we just have the sound effects carry as a weird, electrifying ambience creeps in. It sends chills right through your body. As if that wasn't enough, when the dust settles, Steven's met with the imprint of Garnet's head and limbs in the sand. Yet, both he and the audience have no time to even properly react, as Jasper begins a dialogue as if nothing's happened. Business as usual, which could have been for her. Steven and the viewer are one in this moment, just paralyzed with fear. The character you thought would be able to handle the situation better than anyone just got trashed in no time flat. Sure, Ruby and Sapphire form, and Garnet bounces back shortly after the scene in the beginning of the next episode, but for a brief moment, you're convinced something awful has happened to Garnet. Again, for the first time, you don't know what the gem destabilizer is. Does it just poop gems, or does it prevent them from reforming entirely? A permanent off switch. Intense, creepy, and not much time to even react to everything, this is a scene noteworthy of being dubbed as one of the scariest in the entire series. You have failed. Number 3, Ronaldo Sacrifices Lars For those who don't dig too deep in the lore Steven universe, which is completely okay, you may be unaware holidays don't actually exist in this world. Aside from New Year's Eve for some reason, but I guess that's also fair because you gotta keep track of the current year somehow, so why not make a big festivity out of it? Regardless, that didn't stop both Cartoon Network and the Crewniverse for making episodes that can be aired on certain holidays. Say Uncle for April Fools, Three Gems and a Baby for the Christmas season, if you just happen to not connect the dots to the fact that snowing and the gems bring Steven gifts, and for Halloween, Horror Club. This episode aired in the latter half of season 1 and isn't as talked about even when discussing the development of Lars, even though he sports an attire dangerously close to the one his life temporarily ends in. To make a long story short, Steven, Lars, Sadie, and Renato go to the lighthouse to watch scary films. Then Weird Scooby-Doo hijinks starts happening. They believe the house is haunted, but it's actually possessed by a corrupted gem that has its little own home movie of Lars and Renato's friendship and the day it came to an end. Since this is a stand-in for a Halloween special, you can assume there are plenty of spooky moments and not so thrilling jump scares, and there are. Yet, the most disturbing, scariest scene and the highlight of the episode for me occurs towards its climax. Sadie falls into a floorboard and goes missing. Everyone's panicked when Renato turns to Lars and tells him, it should have been you. French fry boy then puts Lars in the headlock, lifts him up, and throws him into the mouth of the possessed lighthouse. With every intention of the lighthouse eating Lars, this was a straight up sacrifice. This entire moment is just, what the fuck? Lars's plea didn't do jack shit. What if Steven didn't run in and aid him? Would Lars have just died? I know a lot of people hate Ronaldo's character, and even though I find him hilarious, this was just a moment I can't ever forgive, and it makes the hate very justified in various aspects. Ronaldo consciously was just straight up going to kill a man. I understand the situation they were in was very stressful, but really? I can't ever see why that was the only solution, let alone the immediate one. It's not like Ronaldo Ronaldo ever apologized for what he did. He tries to clarify what happened when they were a kid, sure, but the fact he attempted to sacrifice him just totally gets glossed over. The only reason this is so disturbing and out of character is that this is Steven Universe. Actions like that aren't just forgotten, they're usually made a big deal out of. Hell, isn't the main issue between Steven and Rose right now the fact his mother shattered Pink Diamond? Wasn't his beef with Bismuth the fact she wanted to shatter gems? We all know shattering is just a synonym for murder, so uh, what the fuck? If this was any other show, literally 
literally any other show, I wouldn't care as much. But when a character goes against the protagonist's main morals right in front of him, and they just don't address it, that just makes this scene a lot more disturbing. I'm just starting to bitch and nitpick, so let's move on. Number 2. Force Fusions Attack Garnet Raven and Paul are truly the masters of illustrating horror in this series. They went from storyboarding the return, and the scene of Garnet literally crumbling, to the nightmare-induced episode keeping it together, and Nightmare Hospital, which also deals with gem shards. What the actual hell? Storyboarders don't pick which episodes they get to work on, so they definitely just keep getting a signed body horror feel, in which this case kinda makes sense. They gotta keep outdoing themselves. So in keeping it together, we're probably introduced to gem shards. I say properly because you'll see at our number one. Anywho, after chasing Peridot down to the Prime Kindergarten, Steven and Garnet split off from Amethyst and Pearl to explore the control room, where they encounter the terrifying force fusions consisting of gem shards. What I'm sure most find particularly traumatizing is the formation of the hand cluster, vaguely emulating the silhouettes of various gems that composed up before glitching back into place. As if that wasn't enough, we had this strange alien soundtrack that, really, I can only describe as a feeling of anger, confusion, and frustration being missed into one loud sound. Garnet freezing into place drives home just how uneasy this scene is, as once again, she's the leader. When she's taken off guard, you know something's wrong. The hand cluster pulling her in as the soundtrack gets louder, as she just becomes silent and even revealed to be crying when her visor gets knocked off, is nothing short of excellent, and achieves what it's set out to do. Be creepy as shit. It's only enhanced by Garnet apologizing, as if her existence is the sole reason these gems had to suffer and live their afterlife as this monstrosity, and her beginning to infuse as Steven panics? Bone chilling. What sells the scene so well, the absolute star, is definitely the design of the hand cluster. Its various eyes, being an entire body composed of limbs, it's genius. Despite all of this, this isn't the scariest, creepiest scene out of all of Steven Universe. So what is? Before we get into the number one spot, we definitely have some honorable mentions that I won't go too in depth on, but are important to mention nonetheless. Steven's cat fingers. This was actually Actually, the first episode of the show I managed to catch when it was new on TV, and it was at the moment Steven lost full control of its body to the cats rampantly producing as Greg just watched in horror. Yeah, that was definitely an interesting experience to say the least. For some reason, Cartoon Network had a huge boner for this episode. Throughout 2013 and I want to say 2014, whenever I happened to be near the television and the show was on, it was always this episode. I got annoyed after a while, and I think that's what caused me to watch the show so infrequently during season 1. But really, that entire sequence of Steven losing more and more limbs the cats really says it all about why this is so disturbing. Jasper's Corruption This is absolutely one of my favorite scenes of the entire series. Just like the zoom-in breakdown, this has a lot of creepy, disturbing undertones. Just the fact at this point, Jasper really should be aware Steven is not Rose, yet she just projects and pours everything out, as if she's aware this is the end. The music, the close-ups, everything about this scene was amazingly terrifying and tense. And who can forget the iconic pink diamond name drop? Number 1 is Frymo, which you should have all saw coming. But hey, take a moment, guess who storyboarded this one if you didn't pick up on the pattern number 2? Yeah, it was Raven and Paul. Gotta love them. This was our low-key introduction to gem shards, as one shard possesses the Frybo mascot costume, and dear lord, what a spectacle this spirals into. While forcing fries into the mouths of many never fails to make me laugh, why on earth did it grow veins? Its frylocks become sentient tentacles that pull and choke anyone it desires. Pearl spearing through the eye as it bleeds and squirts out ketchup definitely didn't ease the pain of heart. Bro, it screams. Frybo descends into the imagery of a bloody, monstrous murderer was already pushing the envelope of what the show could and couldn't do, and we were only at episode 5. As a kid, I had a curse of Cowardly Dog for my jump scares and phobia of early CGI. Now that's a show whose horror techniques included blending in a mix of different animation mediums. So Steven Universe hasn't even scratched the surface of things that caused me to run from the television screen. Yet, between Steven Universe and Gravity Falls, it feels like having genuine scares in children-targeted animation is making a comeback. I have to admit it, though. Steven stripping down and taking on Frybo with his gem possessed clothing will always be hilarious and definitely takes away any threatening presence the fast food man has had. Regardless, visually the most gruesome, intimidating, and downright frightening thing the universe has put out of their sleeve so far. But taking into account everything on this list, I'm confident they'll top it much sooner than later. Maybe we'll see something with Pink Diamond Shards providing nightmare fuel to the series. But this list is all personal opinion, of course, and we'd love to hear yours. What are your top 10 scenes from Steven Universe that has you sleeping with a nightlight? on. Leave them in the comments below or tweet them to me at AustricVods. If you want to keep in touch with The Roundtable, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at RoundtableVids. We're also on Snapchat at RoundtableYT. Want to be social? Join our Discord, download our official Amino app, and if you want to support us, we have a Patreon. Throw a dollar at us maybe? You get videos early when we have our lives together. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like, share it with your friends,
friends so you can argue about which scene is better. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Hit that bell so you can stay in the loop for all things Steven. Love you all. Thanks for watching. And I hope you have a happy Halloween. Bye.